several years ago, I released this tutorial for DaVinci Resolve recreating this sort of like retro 80s inspired low poly 3D landscape. I even recently sort of republished that video as part of like a four hour master cut going through my last five years here on the channel. It's really cool. I still really like it. But since the time that tutorial was made several years ago, some small things have changed in Resolve um, that have led some people to comment uh, asking for more clarification. So in this video, I'm going to walk through what's changed and how to fix it, kind of. So whether you are following along with that tutorial or just want to learn some cool stuff in Fusion, stick around. And speaking of cool stuff for DaVinci Resolve, if you want to check out one of dozens of free presets, templates, and plugins for DaVinci Resolve, you can head over to sterlingsupply.co, check out all of that there. Again, lots of free stuff, paid products as well, stuff like drag and drop masks for the edit page, as well as like YouTube subscribe graphics, all sorts of stuff. Uh, link in the description to check all of that out, as well as, uh, you know, links to those other tutorials I'm talking about in this. Okay, we're here in Fusion. I'm going to walk through like a node tree I've built, but this right here is the problem. <laughs> in, in the previous video, we took just a generic shape uh, 3D node set to plane. And as I'll walk through, we sort of displace that to make like the mountains of our landscape. We created this grid using this wireframe option, uh, but they have since updated these wireframes to always have these sort of like cross lines going through them. And that just wasn't great for like the style we were going for, especially um, after you like you render those out, they're really small and then you've got to glow to get them back. It didn't look as good just doing this, but we have another little option we can use, um, a grid node. We can sort of build our own wireframes. I have this plain background node here. And what I actually did to keep something simple, we'll walk through, is that I went over to image, I unchecked auto resolution. It doesn't super matter what resolution here, um, but just I set it to the same value uh, to be a perfect square because in the grid node, if we have a fresh copy of the grid node, these are set to a row and a column number of 12 and 20. And that is because if you uh, plug in a standard background node, that sort of stretches those out to be square. Um, but since I made this square myself, if I change that grid to be 20 by 20, we have a perfect grid. I also pulled down this major line spacing. So we just have created a grid on this black uh, background node. And then we are using that as a texture on the shape 3D node. So cool, we have a grid, uh, but where this comes together is uh, here under controls, the subdivisions. That entire plane, because this 3D is built out of polygons, and if this subdivision count matches these column and a uh, row cell numbers, then when we later deform this shape, it will deform perfectly along this grid. So let's do that. Afterwards, I have a displaced 3D node. And what I'm actually gonna do is look at this fast noise that I'm also plugging into it. Um, that is over here. You can see I have a rectangle mask just to demonstrate some cool stuff. But if I preview that displace, you'll see, oh, now we got now we got some mountains going on. That displace has a few controls, uh, importantly, like the scale. If I start to ramp this up or down, you'll see it like controls this overall effect. But what this displace 3D node is doing is it is looking at whatever texture you pipe into it. Here, I'm just using this fast noise and it is pushing um, that 3D scene you have piped into it based on uh, the values of that image. So you can see here, I have this rectangle mask. If I move this mask around, those mountains I move in relative 3D space relative to where this uh, mask ex exists on this 2D image. I did also make this fast noise square um, to keep things you know simple while we're working, but we just have that displace. And then something similar from the past video, if I scale in, zoom in a bit here, you'll see that this shading, which I toggled on with this menu here to see these shadows, these are perfectly flat faces, but the shading sort of like wants to smooth those out. But if I add this replace normals node and uh, set this uh, smoothing angle all the way down to zero, then each of those faces will have a perfectly like uniform shading and it looks, it looks so much better. Then, you know, set that in a simple 3D scene with a camera, render out, and then you can render out and adjust adjust that camera however you would like. Whoa, if you want to see more of that. And then when you render it, you can make it even glow if you want, like pop up, pop up that glow. You can get crazy with it. From here, you should kind of be able to follow along with that past tutorial. The only other issue you might run into is especially if you want to, you know, get into some fun compositing things later or like blur different parts of your image. Uh, this background node we started with, you can see, um, does have this solid black texture. 
So what if you like you just wanted these lines, you didn't want that black, you might think, okay, come into this background node, hop back to color, pull down alpha, and then hey, on that grid node, it is a transparent grid, but um, it's kind of like half, it's funky. <laughs> In this 2D landscape, um, it looks transparent and this grid is solid, but as a texture on that 3D node now, there is absolutely nothing. This grid has this like color data, but if I mouse over these white lines, you'll see uh, the color data down in the corner uh, spikes up to one, but the alpha layer uh, does not carry this information, right? It thinks the entire image is transparent. But if I plug that grid into a bitmap node and set the channel to luminance, it looks like it's back to a, a black and white image, but if I pipe that into the shape 3D node, now it, we just have that grid, no sort of background texture. And if we go all the way to our renderer, or this uh, merge, you can see now you can see right through this shape. So now we have these like th really cool three lines you can actually see through if we add glow after the fact, then you know, you can do some crazy things coming to that fast noise, uh, pull up this seed rate as well, then this will be like naturally waving so many different options for you here. I'm not a giant 3D guy uh, in the fusion page, but I think something like this really plays to the strengths like you're not looking for like crazy, like live action, like high fidelity 3D stuff here. It's like highly stylized, but using the systems to do some really cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed, especially if you like that old video, but wanted um, to address some issues. Here you are. Um, something else I saw in the render 3D, the render or type depending on your hardware you might have that hardware or software renderer or different options here just like mess with what works but specifically um that uh, wireframe option now you got it sorted you can just kind of like create your own wireframes hope you enjoyed hope you learned something um if you're interested in that past tutorial there's lots of other fun stuff there absolutely go check that out and of course if you want presets plug in the templates for resolve i would love to help you out Checking out those websites, finding something you like, especially finding something you love from my paid products is absolutely the best way to support me. I do absolutely need that support to keep this channel uh, going. So if you want to check those out, please do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.